Hello, doctor. I've been worrying about my baby. I'm not sure if I'm overreacting, but she has been acting strange lately. She's eight months old, correct? Yes, that's correct. What's been happening? Well, she used to crawl around the house, but she barely moves. She only lies in her crib. And there have been no changes to her diet or anything else? No, nothing has changed. Was there anything else? Well, I'm not sure if this is important. But any time our dog barks or something falls on the floor... <laughs> she becomes hysterical and cries, but otherwise, if I call her name, she does not respond. Let me examine her. Oh dear. It appears she has red spots in both eyes. This is a symptom of a rare genetic disorder, Tay-Sachs disease, most likely. Oh no! I'll take a blood test, and I'll call you about the results in approximately two weeks. Oh my goodness! Thank you. We'll be on our way. Hello? Hello, miss. Your results have come back for your child. You need to come in immediately to discuss them. I'm sorry to say that your child indeed has Tay-Sachs disease. So what is Tay-Sachs? What can we do? Will she live? What about my baby? I can see you have many questions, so I think it will be a good idea to show you this informational video instead of telling you all the information. Tay-Sachs disease is a genetic disorder. It is inherited due to an autosomal recessive pattern found in both parents. Generally, both parents have already undergone the mutations, but only have one copy of the allele. So therefore, they remain as healthy individuals and don't express the disease throughout their lifetime. The child will either have a 25% chance of receiving a homogeneous recessive autosomal gene that expresses the Tay-Sachs trait, or a 50% chance of becoming a carrier of the Tay-Sachs trait. If the offspring carries both recessive alleles, then the offspring will carry the disease and not live past the age of five. To determine whether one is a carrier, one has to undergo carrier screening or a simple blood test. Another indicator of being Tay-Sachs positive would be for a child to have a red spot in the retina of their eye. If blood tests weren't done, then the disease would remain hidden in families for generations until one of the offsprings is born with the disease. Even without a family history of Tay-Sachs, it is still possible to be born with a disease. However, there have not been any or barely any cases where this has occurred. The most frequent cases are found with individuals who are Eastern European Jews. About one in every 27 Jews has Tay-Sachs. In the most basic sense, here is what would be seen from a child with Tay-Sachs disease. By six months of age, the child's development progressively slows down and thus the child soon becomes unable to crawl, reach, or sit. The child may also have problems breathing and swallowing. Gradually, by the age of two years old, the child becomes generally unresponsive to their environment and can become deaf, paralyzed, and blind. This causes a very literal communication issue. If the child is unable to perform physical movements or have the ability to express themselves, they will be unable to properly communicate whatever issues they're having to a parent. For example, Think about if a child has trouble breathing. Physical communication is fundamental to toddlers as they are unable to talk at this age. Hence, if the child has issues breathing and it goes undetected by parents because the child cannot demonstrate physically to the adult that they're having an issue, this causes a very potentially threatening problem. The child is unable to carry out basic human functions and this leaves the determining of necessities completely up to parents. This is clearly not a functional cycle of communication which is a necessity for infants who are unable to speak for themselves. The parent is unable to know, therefore, if the child is okay. 
Unfortunately, a baby that is affected by TSD usually passes away by the age of five as their nervous system becomes very badly affected by the disease. Juveniles and those who experience late onset Tay Sachs experience physical degradation and communicative degradation like infants. TSD arises from a genetic defect which stops the body from producing sufficient amounts of beta hexosaminidase, hex A for short. In order to break down a lipid called gangliocide, the enzyme is needed. If someone is affected by TSD, Due to the insufficient amount of this enzyme within the body, dangerous amounts of gangliocide build up in the cell's lysosomes. The buildup of this lipid is most severe in the brain's cells. Within neurons, this accumulation of the lipid within the cell eventually becomes so great that it destroys the cells. Hence, pathways of communication are cut off and chemical signals within the human are unable to properly be sent throughout the body. I can't believe this. What can we do for treatment? There is no cure. There are ways to control the symptoms, but I'm very sorry. It is fatal. In the 1970s, advances in genetic screening made it possible for people to find out if they were Tay-Sachs carriers. This development has led to a 90% reduction of the Tay-Sachs disease among certain ethnic groups. Scientists researching therapeutic treatments are receiving funding from large organizations such as the NIH. And most research is aimed to either restore the missing enzymes or to reduce the accumulation of gangliosides. I'm sorry to say, there's nothing much we can do. Oh, we'll make sure that the baby lives her days to the fullest.